I think it's important that we all know about the hazardous effects or the potentially hazardous effects of living or working in a world where there's too much noise exposure. The potential to lose hearing, to damage the cells of the inner ear, really starts with the earliest exposures. So young children can be overexposed and can sustain damage that repeated for time after time after time over a lifetime can contribute to hearing loss. Over the past few years, the development of digital audio players, MP3s and uh, Walkman type devices and iPod devices have made smaller and smaller earphones that can actually fit down into the ear canal and get very close to the eardrum. These kinds of earphones are potentially more hazardous because they bring the source of sound very, very close to the ear. So it doesn't take as many watts to create the levels of sound that at moderate levels is pleasing, but at extreme levels can be hazardous. If you think about, you know, th you think about the genre of you being an infant, toddler, school-age kid, teenager, college student, you can think about different kinds of noises that are common in those groups, and the very youngest, it's not the iPod. They're not listening to iPods, but when you're one and a half years old, you already have noisy toys. I think for many kids, it's fair to say that the first exposures to loud sounds routinely come from their toys that they play with. So that's, and parents are the only ones who get to decide which of those toys are there because the kids aren't old enough to select their own toys. It's the parent is making a selection and I think the message just ought to be pay attention to its sound. You would look, you would, as a parent, you'd walk in the store and if it had a little tiny little things that could be choked on, you wouldn't buy it, whether it said caution presents a choking hazard or not. This book is an example of a kind of a toy that makes sound, and if I press the button, I can turn it on, and if I listen to it at a distance, an adult distance, with my arms holding it out away from me, it really doesn't sound very loud at all. But that's not really the way to test it, because that's not the way that your child is going to listen to this toy. For demonstration purposes, we can turn this on and, and at a common really distance, I'm reading the numbers off a sound level meter. This is about 78 to 80 decibels, which is about what your speaking voice would be if you were close to the child. But if we put the device right up against the ear, it becomes 106 decibels. So this is really a very, very loud toy. So when we're choosing toys for our children, I think we need to pay attention to how loud they are, as well as whether they uh, seem to be safe choi choices of toys and seem to be useful for our kids.